good morning and good afternoon to all we welcome you to the second lecture in the ticnet webinar series uh, today we have uh, amongst us dr sinan sebastian hagina dealing with the topic population genetic considerations for selection of plant reproductive material of teak dr sinan uh, did his bachelor studies in forestry science and ecology at the university of gottingen germany and uh, he focused on tropical silviculture for his master studies and uh, worked on uh, tropical forest genetics for his uh, doctoral uh, studies he worked in the tropical countries extensively throughout his career and uh, now he is into translating the scientific knowledge gained into a practical context uh, so now it's uh, over to you dr sinan for the lecture hello everyone uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, the topic of my presentation is um, population genetic considerations for selection of forest reproductive material of teak. So I would like to start um, with an introduction um, regarding forest reproductive material of teak, um, followed by the importance of genetic variation in um, timber plantations of teak, the importance of adaptedness of forest reproductive material to site specific conditions, um, followed by uh, my conclusions. So to start with an FAO definition of the term um, forest reproductive material, um, the term forest reprodu reproductive material or FRM encompasses seeds, plant parts, um, example given cuttings in science, and plants raised by means of seeds or parts of plants, including plants propagated in vitro. So basically, um, all possible materials used for planting teak uh, fall under the term FRM. So um, teak is one of the most widely used plantation timber species in the tropics. 77% uh, of planted teak stands are younger than 20 years, um, which might indicate short rotations, but also increased planting efforts in recent years. The germination, uh, the germination and early ontogenesis of seeds in um, natural regeneration of teak is little understood. Um, natural regeneration does often not occur, thus um, stands are replanted. Um, furthermore, there's a pronounced interest in breeding of teak um, and recently developed material in this uh, context is uh, preferably planted. So. All these points I just mentioned um, suggest that the demand for forest reproductive material of teak will remain high in the future. So teak can be planted with different objectives. Um, one could initiate um, a breeding project, establish a propagation stand, dynamic exit to conservation stand, or most commonly timber production stand. So, um, the selection criteria for forest reproductive material vary depending on the function of the established stand and the genetic composition is consequently different. So the assumption in this presentation is that teak is planted for timber production um, with the objective to create healthy high yield timber stands. So. Um, the phenotype of the tree, including um, its growth characteristics, um, is a result of uh, interaction between its genes and the abio abiotic and biotic environment it exists in. Um, the genetic composition of forest reproductive material decides on the genetic potential of a stand to develop into a well-adapted, healthy adult tree population. And the choice of forest reproductive material will affect the entire life cycle of a planted forest. So choosing such material 
is a fundamental decision in reforestation that should involve thorough research and planning. Um, a view that is kind of common among teak managers is that reproductive material should consist of one fast growing clone or a small group of clones uh, with the expectation to optimize um, timber yield. And this approach seems to be inspired by a breeding of ag agricultural crops where yield is expected to be high and plants should have very uniform characteristics. The objective to generate uh, increased yield in timber production is legitimate. Um, however, pronounced differences in management of agricultural crops and um, planted teak forest suggests that a distinct approach is needed um, for teak forest. So, um, Regarding agricultural crops, um, they generate annual revenue, which justifies investing in soil treatments, fertilizing and use of pesticides. In teak, on the other hand, uh, revenue is only generated after decades in the harvest, um, and that only justifies extensive management. Also, crop plants only have to survive uh, a few months. Um, while teak trees have to survive decades and withstand abiotic and biotic changes. So, um, in addition to that, breeders can make annual adaptations in selecting and breeding varieties according to environmental changes. But um, the choice of forest reproductive material during um, establishment of a planted forest decides on the genetic base of the population for years to come. So. Um, Consequently, uh, the strong modification of the environment and short life cycle of crops um, justifies plant populations of low genetic variation in agriculture. However, in teak um, forests, this is not the case. So conventional tree breeding focuses on the improvement of a small number of traits uh, however, a multitude of traits are required for a tree to withstand environmental changes over time. Genetically uniform or little diverse tree populations are expected to respond to change in a similar way and thus have limited adaptive potential on population level. Um, high levels of genetic variation in teak populations should be seen as risk mitigation. So if a population, if a genotype fails to adapt to change in a stand with high genetic variation, only a small group of uh, tree individuals will be affected. However, if um, a genotype fails to adapt to change and it is the only existing genotype, all trees will be affected with strong negative consequences for um, uh, population health and timber yield. So um, one factor that can introduce um, change in teak populations are generations of insects and pathogens. A single teak tree needs to withstand multiple generations um, throughout his, uh, a tree's uh, population's lifetime. And every generation of pest organisms implies selection and thus adaptation to the host teak population. And genetically uniform or little diverse uh, populations are, more, are a more homogeneous substrate and thus uh, quick adaptation uh, is more likely in such populations. So, um, uh, when a population of teak trees develops into a healthy stand in the first years of, uh, after establishment, one might, think, might expect that this will inevitably uh, continue. However, the assumption would be that uh, the environmental conditions do not change throughout the lifespan um, of trees, which is not the case. Um, years of strong drought or heavy rain and increasing efficiency um, of pest organisms, for example, may affect tree health in later years. So in the following slides, I want to give an example of how a newly introduced pathogen strongly damaged populations of temperate tree species 
in Europe. So um, this fungal pathogen is called Humanocyphus fraxineus. Uh, it was introduced from Asia um, and causes the disease called ash dieback in the temperate tree species European ash fraxinus um, excelsior. And on the right, we can see two images. The left one shows the disease progression on the stem and uh, at the left one and the right one shows the crown damage uh, as a result of, of the disease. And um, this pathogen jumped from a, an Asian ash species to European ash and was first observed in um, Europe in, in 92. In Asian ash species, um, the pathogen causes little harm, but European ash populations suffer um, strong mortality rates. So a study from 2018 suggests that uh, only 5% of European ash trees have a partial resistance uh, to the pathogen. And a survey um, on European level from 2019 uh, revealed mortality rates as high as 85% in plantations and 70% in, in woodlands. So this example shows um, how sudden change of the biotic environment can affect ecosystems, forest management and tree breeding. So the focus um, in terms of breeding and management of European ash is now to increase resistance towards this pathogen and um, survival rates. And the reason for these very high mortality rates is that the tree species and the pathogen evolved separately over a very long time, so there was no previous coevolution between the two species. And such a scenario is um, obviously difficult to prepare against. And luckily, teak has been widely cultivated around the tropics for many years. Thus, um, the occurrence of such a novel pathogen um, is hopefully unlikely. However, uh, the point I want to make with this example is that also teak populations need to be equipped with a broad set of tools, meaning resistance genes to counteract microevolution of pest organisms. So um, conventional tree breeding focuses on a small number of traits and inevitably leads to a reduction of uh, genetic variation via artificial selection. Uh, an approach in breeding for insect and pathogen resistance, however, is to maximize the number of resistance genes on population level. Um, and this obviously requires a higher level of genetic variation. Breeding efforts, efforts consequently that strongly reduce genetic variation of forest reproductive material, such as practice in agriculture, counteract the objective to establish timber production forests, forests with an increased likelihood uh, of resistance towards pests and all over higher adaptive potential. So what are the implications of genetic variation as selection, selection factor for forest reproductive material? Producers of such material can focus on breeding for a small number of traits such as growth characteristics and wood properties. However, reproductive material needs to be generated from a large number of um, source trees in this way, avoiding genetic uniformity. Um, producers should thus offer information on the number of trees that were selected as a source. Uh, in vegetative material and micropropagation, this would be indicated by the number of clones. In seed material, by the number of seed parents. Um, secondly, the population of trees selected as a source for uh, um, forest reproductive material should be as genetically diverse as possible on the precondition that uh, selected trees carry desired traits. So trees selected should show mostly distinct genotypes at given loci, ideally maximizing the number of genotypes. So a producer of forest reproductive material should, should um, provide information on the genetic composition of source trees. Uh, using a set of um, molecular markers.
Um, in, uh, another selection criteria for reproductive material of teak is adaptedness. So selection pressures are factors that can affect reproductive success in the population. Selection pressures originate from the abiotic and biotic environment around a teak population. These could be the climate, um, soil properties, and uh, the ecosystem involving competing species and pests. So the genetic composition of a natural teak population is the result of selection over multiple generations caused by the total of selection pressures that form the adaptively relevant environment. So the exposure of a given population to an adaptively relevant environment over generations leads to an increased adaptedness via selection. Teak is, however, often replanted using material from propagation and breeding populations. And by using a material obtained from outside the planting site, we introduce genetic material that was generated in a specific, adaptively relevant environment. So, since um, adaptively relevant environments vary between populations, there is no certainty that randomly selected material adapts well to a given planting site. To increase the likelihood that material can adapt well to the planting site and express certain traits, a source, a source population with an adaptively relevant environment similar to the planting site needs to be identified. So this would require an assessment of the abiotic and biotic environment of the planting site and information provided on potential source populations for the selection of um, forest reproductive material. So um, here's some examples what could be included in such an assessment. Annual precipitation patterns um, are um, an important aspect. So on the right of the slide on top we see a climate diagram of Semarang in central Java and we can see that the um, dry season is mostly pronounced during two weeks from June until August, um, excuse me, two months from uh, June until August, while um, the lower climate diagram shows uh, area around Yangon and Myanmar, and we have a much more pronounced dry season um, that lasts about four months. So um, in this context, one having obtained such a clim climate diagram, one could ask the question, how relevant is, is drought stress tolerance um, for a given site and should I search for a, a producer that also focusing, focuses on drought stress tolerance in, um, in the breeding approach. Um, uh, soil analysis would also be important including a laboratory analysis of soil samples and a character, characterization of soil horizons. So um, where are the constraints for root and plant development in the soil? How's the nutrient supply? the root available depth and does water logging occur uh, on, on, in, in this area. And also, uh, if teak is already growing in the area where I want to plant, um, are there any pest insects or pathogens near the teak stand? So what, what potential threats um, uh, do I have to expect when planting teak uh, on a given site? And such information as described, it's not a complete list obviously, um, should be compared with information from several potential sources of um, forest re um, reproductive material. So um, what are the implications of adaptedness as a factor for selection of forest reproductive material? Producers of um, reproductive material should provide information on the abiotic and biotic environment of the source population, including plant diagram, soil analysis report, and list of pest organisms encountered. Um, excuse me. Um, with regard to adaptedness, source populations located near the planting site in similar environments are recommendable. 
However, uh, populations from other regions or countries with similar adaptively relevant environments can provide um, uh, um, material that can adapt well to a given site also. It is unlikely, however, that a single source population can provide forest um, reproductive material that adapts well across the entire range of environments in which teak uh, exists. So, um, the intention uh, behind this presentation was to show that the application of ecological and population genetic knowledge in the selection of forest reproductive material can contribute to the establishment of um, healthy, well-adapted teak populations. Um, <clears throat> from the time of uh, plantation establishment to the phase of tree maturity and timber harvest, shifts in selective pressure may occur. Uh, genetic variation is a prerequisite for uh, populations to respond to environmental change since it affects the adaptive potential of populations. Planted forests of, of teak with a genetic base that is much lower um, or narrower compared to uh, natural populations may not possess sufficient adaptive potential and consequently breeding project programs should ensure that a certain level of genetic variation remains despite artificial selection. Um, sexual reproduction followed by natural regeneration um, constitute selection steps that lead to the adaptation of a population to a given environment over generations. Um, teak is often replanted with material from outside the planting site, so this process does not occur and uh, material is artificially selected and transferred. A detailed assessment of the environment of the planting site and potential source populations for material and um, the choice of the source population most similar to the planting site increases the likelihood that forest reproductive material is introduced that adapts well. So, um, a characterization of um, the planting site is something that is commonly done uh, even before species selection. It is, however, also important to investigate source populations of forest reproductive material. And finally, um, applying population genetic principles for selection of um, material does not contradict um, breeding efforts that aim at improving selected traits such as growth characteristics and wood properties. Um, among forest reprodu reprodu reproductive material, all materials including seeds, vegetative material and materials from micropropagation are suitable in certain contexts. And breeding approaches have shown to yield improvements in quantitative traits of teak and should be applied together with the concepts described in this presentation. So, these are my citations. And thank you for your attention. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Sinan, uh, for the nice presentation. Okay, I will, I will try to um, I'll try to answer the question. Uh, what is the proof for saying that um, uh, applying genetic principles for selection uh, do not contradict with selection for wood properties? Well, so um, as I mentioned, like my two core uh, messages in this presentation were that genetic variation is important. Um, the first one is that genetic variation is important. So, uh, when you have um, a breeding approach, yes, um, when you have a, a breeding approach that focusing focuses on a certain wood property, yeah, you would um, you would focus on that property. You would focus on um, on the expression of that trait. Um, uh, to be present in all your, on all the trees you want to propagate. However, um, you also have to make sure that you're not limiting yourself to one or, or two um, genotypes, trees, but uh, you maintain genetic variation. And um, if 
this breeding approach talking about uh, wood parties is implemented let's say in a area with um, very high annual precipitation throughout the year there is no pronounced dry season um, then it might not be suitable to be planted um, in, in an area with a four month dry season because um, the material even though it was bred for wood properties um, may not possess uh, the drought stress tolerance it needs in order to survive in, in this um, example environment with four month intense uh, dry season so I hope um, this answers the question in a way yeah can you hear us now Dr. Sinan so are there any, any other questions Well, um, a question from Andrew Callister uh, is um, if I could mention some examples that I have seen where a narrow genetic base um, has produced uh, teak plantations with poor health or adaptiveness. So um, honestly, um, it is always difficult to prove in a certain point what is the, um, what is the reason for a teak plantation with poor health uh, or, or adaptedness because it is always a result of interaction between um, genes and the environment. Uh, so actually proving this um, is not uh, that easy and I do not have a, a definite example um, of, such a, uh, of such a case study um, present at, the, at this point. But um, well, the points I presented are based on yeah, population genetic uh, findings yeah, that exceed uh, TIG research. Yeah. So another question is um, what was learned from taking TIG seeds to Africa and Latin America from Asia. How best could the plants adapt? Yeah, so um, this relates to the to the second criteria I mentioned, the adaptiveness. So um, whenever you introduce um, teak to a novel environment as an exotic, um, you need to study the abiotic and biotic uh, environment where you want to plant teak and um, consequently select material like let's say from the natural distribution range of, uh, of teak you select a source population this could be a center of genetic uh, genetic diversity um, uh, that is most similar uh, in terms of um, abiotic and biotic uh, environmental conditions to the the site uh, you want to plant it So, could you please elaborate on applying population genetic principles for selection of um, forest uh, reproductive material? Um, well, it's kind of what I was trying to do in this presentation. Um, so, Maybe you could uh, specify the question a bit more. Could you please elaborate on applying population genetic principles for selection of um, forest uh, reproductive material? Um, well, it's kind of what I was trying to do in this presentation. Um, so, Maybe you could uh, specify the question a bit more. 
Um, it's a question from uh, Michael Hayden. Uh, if there is a local source population available um, to use to commence another production um, of uh, forest reproductive material, how would you commence scaling up production from planting 200 hectares to uh, 10,000 hectares in a short time frame? And what would, would, would be your concerns? Okay, wow, that's mm -hmm. quite a, a com complex question. Um, I don't know if I can fully answer that because it's uh, it's like a draft of a, a, a big project. But, um, well, obviously, I mean, tissue culture is, is certainly a method that offers um, the mass um, uh, production of, of material. And, um, well, my main concern by, by scaling up in a rather, rather short time frame would be that um, decisions are made too quick. Um, the site conditions are not well studied. Um, the, the material used is not well um, studied and the, the site conditions um, it originates from. So that would be my concern. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, several questions. Okay, how do molecular markers help? So um, I mentioned molecular markers in the context of, uh, of showing that um, trees selected as, as sources for forest reproductive material are uh, distinct so that you make sure you do not have um, a genetically homogeneous um, uh, stance. So that would be uh, one, one helpful application of molecular markers. Um, in the case of a population with a maximum admixture, how differently would local adaptation... Sorry. In the case of a population with a maximum admixture... and influencing genes. Hmm. Mixture. I'm not sure if I fully understand the question with maximum and mixture. How differently uh, would local adaptation and influencing genes? Um, well, so um, I mean, genetic variation. Uh, forms the basis on which evolution can act on. So, um, I hope, I'm not sure if I understand. There was another question, um, again, from if I've seen uh, examples uh, where a narrow genetic base um, has produced teak plantations with poor health or adaptiveness. So, I tried to, to answer that question um, before. So now I have personally not seen such stands, and I think it is difficult, uh, also in practice, to prove um, to prove that uh, because um, yeah, if, if a stand is in poor health, uh, how do how do you determine that it is due to uh, the genetic uh, constitution? However, we could ask the question: Why does um, uh, genetic variation exist in nature? Why do we have natural tree populations? Um, have genetic variation. Uh, if it would not serve um, uh, a function in terms of um, physiological and also evolutionary adaptive potential on population level, then, then why does it exist? So are there any other questions? Okay, uh, so uh, Dr. Sinan, uh, I think uh, uh, 
uh, we have answered all the questions that has been posted in the chat box and uh, thank you all uh, for supporting us in the webinar series uh, so thank you dr sinan um, for